your last matchup, do or die for both teams as we come into the semi-final match. Moscow 5 BenQ versus Taipei Assassins. This one team is going home, and one team is going on to the World Finals. Yeah, these teams are guaranteed $150,000 for being one of the four best teams in the world. By all rights, the four best teams in the world. You're seeing them in front of you today. After this match, we've got another semifinal as Counter-Logic Gaming Europe does take on Azubu Frost the for the remake. other final <laughs> slot. Yeah, the, the remake of the OG and Champion Summer League. Uh, but here you've got the Game 3 for the best teams in the world. One of these guys is going into the finals. You know, we, we've heard a lot of the audience call M5 BenQ a heavy favorite. Reginald favored uh, M5 BenQ is a heavy favorite, but a lot of these other players, uh, Hotshot and I think um, uh, Wicket as well, saying that TPA had the advantage here. And TPA, once again, playing aggressively. Pressure and pokes start off this invasion. They did get a little bit of damage onto Alex. He is going to not exactly use that to advantage, but have to stay in the back for this fight. He's really going to be able to only throw barrels out, maybe get his ignite off if the fight he were to happen. But I'm talking about something that won't. These guys are headed down a little bit here. It looks like they're going to try to flash frost over that bush and grab somebody. If they it. can, they found Gosu. He is forced to flash out, which then gives them the aggression they would love to have in that bottom lane freak. It's going to make it very good for them. Diamond trying to clear out his jungle, knowing that they could be close. They have the ward down, and he says, I just figured they took it already. And this is actually really smart. TPA already planned to go for red from minute one. If you look at the top river, they already warded where Shivana's running by right now, looking for the lizard buff invade. So they, they know that's happening there as a counterattack right now. Uh, and so, so Lil Boss with the lizard buff knows that uh, there was one coming by, and he's going to go for the steal himself. And the thing is, though, TPA is not actually wait, uh, not really ready to stop that. So despite all the early move, that lizard buff is really just going to trade hands no matter what. This is just the mechanics of knowing something is going to work and that you're safe doing it. Genja in lane by himself. Here comes from the poke from Mistake. Once they hit level two, he's going to be able to heal that back. But they're going very aggressive here. Not even worrying about Gosu, but Gosu body blocks a Mystic shot. Keeping Genja in this fight. They look for the kill, but the flash is forced. And the thing is, though, Genja, his summoner heal is still available, but the Ignite's already been burned from BB. They did not have the damage to pick up Genja. So this matchup, actually, really good for M5. Now, Ghost Pepper's low on health. He doesn't have any potions left. He will take some harass, and that's going to be on mistake. He's got a ward in that brush. He's got that ward there because, again, he wants to poke in that brush. He doesn't want to let Ghost Pepper sit somewhere safe and, and immune to counterattack, so they want to go for some pressure here, and you'll see Mistake come in. There's the nice pressure. You know, lower the counterattack damage and just walk into the brush safe and sound. That's going to be nice. There's actually no wards here for Ghost Pepper. He opened with boots, which really hurt his lane control. This lane is going to be so hard for M5 because they've got no ward presence whatsoever. You're going to see so much poke come from TPA unless they make any major mistakes. And it'll be hard to capitalize because Ghost Pepper, his exhaust is down. There's yeah. not a lot of options here for M5 to counterattack. Oh, Diamond coming on the backside here. He gets the first bit of damage down. The Twin Bite hits. The Ignite is off a beautiful Flash Frost from Anivia. Keeps them from following. And Lobos will be forced back into his own jungle. He may be able to get some experience here, but you can see how Diamond Prox is using this to his advantage. He is just going through the jungle now, stealing what he can, knowing Little Balls cannot face him. This bottom lane pushing quite hard. Freak, you said it's going to be hard without wards, and even with the composition, Mistake wants to queue all day long. He's going to be doing damage to minions, and that wave is going to continue to push, making it even harder for them. And yeah, the one good thing here for Taipei Assassins is that Mistake has that Fairy Charm early on, so he's going to keep healing on Sona. I mean, look at M5's health bars. They're so empty right now. Kog'Maw's out of potions. Nunu, out of potions. There's no sustain there. Genja not having a good time of this one. He's got that three lifesteal from Masteries, and the Summoner heal if it gets into a pinch. Now, hopefully TPA remembers that that's still up, or otherwise they're going to get baited into a bad fight. But other than that, there's not a lot of recourse here. M5 going to keep taking harass. Maybe they lose their turret, but, uh, you know, ultimately it just makes it a really, really scary situation for Genja. You know, Freak, I really like Sona as a matchup to Nunu. The heals usually just negate the Flash Frost into the point where you gain an advantage in the lane. You can carry it off of that as well as the poke. Little Ball's coming in mid here. Alex taking a cleaver, but he realizes that, you know, it's kind of just aggressiveness. And mid, I'll back off from this. They do still have Little Ball's around that area, and we have seen that Mundo gang come in quite hard. He's actually going for his Wraith, Stanley pushing top, keeping Darien down at low mana, but keeping him in that lane as well. 
Stanley is trying to keep him farming these minions at the turret, but he just wants to keep pushing them in as well, denying that experience as much as possible. You can see Darren trying to just throw his mana out to get see, uh, minions in his favor. 27 to 27, he's keeping it actually quite even. There's really no lead in any lane. And as I say that, I look down, it's going to be BB with 34 CS to again, just 18. And that is a huge lead. That is, again, that bottom lane being so incredibly amazing. But this top lane is super safe as well. Of course, we just pan away from that. But Stanley knows that there is no exhaust uh, on the opposing jungler. The lizard buff is timed out by now. He doesn't even need wards. You know, Darian can't follow up. He's out of mana, so he can't slow. Shivana again, has no crowd control as well. Uh, sh uh, this Needly is super, super safe. Still has all three health potions. There is no reason for Needly to leave until that seven and a half minute mark when there's a buff comes back out. You know, Darian finally recalled back and got some mana, but even still, there's not a lot of options here for M5 to stop Stanley. He will happily stay in this lane and happily keep pressuring. There is no way to stop him in this top lane. Both junglers feeling comfortable in the opposing t enemy's jungle. We can see Mundo going down bottom as Diamond Prox smites away the big Wraith. He will be coming from behind. There is no ward here, and it looks like he will take a bit of damage. Goes for Gosu, though, and they're playing in a safe position. No real damage taken there. Alex pushing his lane into a Nivea. Not exactly the best last hitter at the turret, but they are both level 6, so she's going to be able to clean up quite easily. This toy's more than happy to just auto-attack a siege there under his turret. Seven minutes into the game, no turrets, no kills. First blood still to come out. Somebody to get that gold lead. It is 7.5 thousand gold even right now. And they are just absolutely splitting this gold. The one thing that's going well for M5 BenQ is that their bottom lane is able to clear up the minion wave and then run to their jungle and pick up the double golems down there. They've done that at least once now. That helps them keep up in gold. It's about 65 gold every time you clear that wave out, and that does, you know, scale up throughout the game. But it's the one thing that's going to keep Genja in this game because this lane's still a bit of a mismatch, still very difficult for him. See Mundo again. You see Hotshot building those Doran shields onto uh, Mundo when he plays him as well. Little Ball is taking the same into consideration with that health regen as well as a little bit of armor and health. So we'll see him trying to really utilize that to get himself out in lane to be more aggressive. He's going to soak up some experience here in mid as Alex just goes back. Very well timed on the minion wave, crushing into the turret in middle. Aggression here up atop. Stanley just trying to throw down. You can see the damage trade completely in his favor this time. It's a different game. Darian did not have that, that swap lane to farm against and that just the one player, so it's going to be a little bit different for him this game. We can see him falling behind. There's a really good piece of teamwork coming on, though, from M5 BenQ, is that Diamond now, at 7 minutes, has picked up an Oracle's Elixir. What this means is he's, he's about to hit level 6 and have his ultimate, so he can initiate for fights, and he's got Lizard buff again for the next two minutes as well, and Alex Ish in that mid lane, who loves to roam and is on Gragas, has now surpassed level 6 as well. There is a ton of roam opportunity for M5 BenQ, and when you want to roam and pick up kills, you want to sweep out wards with that Oracle's Elixir. So you're going to see Diamond run around the map, sweep out those side lanes, and suddenly M5 is going to run in for fights very, very soon. In the next two minutes, expect a lot of ganks. Darian forced again under his turret. The attacks come out from Stanley. The hits go down. The damage trade about equal there. You can see Stanley probably trying to rethink doing that once again with the turret shot. Darian playing each in a, each uh, instance that he can to get that damage back. A little bit of a gold lead here going in favor of TPA, but they tick together, keeping about 100 gold difference. Toys picking up that blue buff. It is now up for Alexich, and he is forcing one more wave again into the turret here for Toys. Mundo at the top of his jungle. Little balls in his build still really hasn't bought too much for himself. He's only eight CS behind, eight minions rather, behind Diamond Prox. No real aggression from them in the lane street. But you said once these buffs are distributed, the junglers find themselves. They're going to be dressing. Here we see Toys getting damage done to him. A beautiful exploding cast coming from Alex. But he's just not able to get the kill down as the flash is forced. That was a really, really nice move. Every skill shot landed. Ignite used as well. The flash down for Toys is a pretty scary place to be in. Now he's got some counterattack damage available with the golden buff. You know, with his Ignite available, he should have a decent shot of this. But he was forced to recall by some new items. Alex, you know, we, we said that Toys needed to bring his A game and really be the big carry and shut down Alex. Uh, and that ended up being, you know, somewhat the case in game two. His game three, though, slightly in Alex Ish's favor on Gragas. That's a very, very big deal because their bottom lane's not in great shape. Their top lane, not amazing either for M5 NQ. And so they need some of that, that pressure to really come through that mid lane. They need him to show up and get some gold. Little Balls not knowing that Moscow 5 has been taking those golems, as you just said, and finds himself a little bit of damage. And here comes Alex and Diamond. They are going to come down behind the entire team. There are really no wards there, but once they get into this bush, they are going to be able to see them. Is it too late, though? Mistake does have the ulti. He chooses to use it. Bebe still with shift up. 
they walk away from this one quite easily, Freak. And they needed that ultimate to come out early on. They could not have waited until Shivana dove in. Now, Explosive Cask was down. I don't think they really counted that cooldown from Alex. But even still, just, just the pressure uh, you know, from Shivana and just the damage output coming in and, and possibly the body slam from Alex could have been enough. Boys, not in the best place right now against Alex either. He'll land the stun, should be able to walk away from this one. Explosive Cask, though, up pretty soon. Great trade in damage. Alex knows he's winning, but he has to be careful. The minion wave coming up on him started to really trade that in Toys' favor. Little balls just on the backside as well. Alex, however, playing just a very aggressive mid on this Gragas right now. The blue buff on him continues to farm away. Diamond coming in. They go in on mistake, but he flashes out. A little bit of crowd control from the exhaust, but really, as we said before, no hard crowd control to lock these guys down. That was, that was actually incredibly impressive, though. Both of them completely dodging those fights out and dealing a bunch of damage to Genja in the process. And Lil Balls waiting right there, actually, still putting the pressure on. Now, the one thing that's gone really well for uh, Diamond is that he has gone for the early Oracle. He's spent a lot of wards in, in doing so. So he's put out a lot of pressure early on. Um, but he's not put pressure on that top lane. Stanley, you know, I, I criticized that Needly counterpick. Turns out it's a really, really good counterpick. Rushing that Chalice gave him the mana regen he needed and right. the magic resist to actually out-trade Darien and keep the pressure on. And again, knowing that he's Needly, knowing that there's not a lot of pressure coming in from Shivana, knowing that he's not the focus here, that, that M5 would leave Darien to his lane, allowed him to keep the pressure on and actually snowball his other lanes forward by killing off turrets. Once again, the Chalice into Spirit Visage coming up for Stanley. He's going for the same exact build. If it's not broke, don't fix it. 104 minion kills coming for Alex as he just continues to bolster that number. Coming into this, the Freak, I really got to hand it to the junglers right now. Little Balls and Diamond playing very well. Whenever a gank comes down, they're there, counter ganking or initiating the gank. They have really been the ones that are keeping this game at zero and zero. They, they're absolutely kind of making a lot of plays here. Alex, though, taking a bit of pain there. Oh, my gosh, this is not good for Little Balls. That was a really great ultimate. Little Balls, I thought he was going to disperse them away, but he throws them under the turret. So he forced the ultimate there. We have heard Reginald say you can use the Gragas ulti quite a bit, so it's not too bad that he has it down. And you can still see that he's playing aggressive. Yeah, so, so yeah, these junglers are trying to put pressure on, on the map overall, you know, show up to ganks when they're available, uh, and, but they've been counter ganking so well that, that no one's been able to really put the pressure on, and this is M5 playing so, so intelligently, because uh, basically TPA counterpicked every single lane. They, you know, they saw York come out early and counterpicked with Needly. They saw the, 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 uh, the duo lane come out with, with Kog'Maw and Nunu, and they counterpicked their Sona Ezreal. They saw Gragas come out, they counterpicked with Anivia. I think with the exception of the jungle, every single one of TPA's lanes was basically picked second and, and reacted every single pick. And they, they've tried to build themselves counter lanes in every single situation. M5, despite having a late game composition, are actually surviving this, this early mid game very, very well. With the exception of that early turret kill, there's been no major advantage. M5 will still scale throughout this game. They've still got a really great team composition at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, this looks a lot like Counter Logic Gaming Europe versus Team WE. Uh, where that late game just gets scarier and scarier. There is a new new Kog'Maw. That is the epitome of a late game team. There needs to be some more pressure here from TPA. Just look at this lane from Stanley up top. He is so much more confident in this game. I said if it's not broken, don't fix it. He plays Nidalee versus Yorick again. You can see him taking some damage here, trying to jump past, get some uh, minions in his favor during this fight, but he's going to be forced out of this one. However, he took that turret down way earlier than last game, at least 10 minutes before that, knowing he would win his lane definitively, pushing Darien in. There's going to be a lot quicker roam now, a 2,000 gold lead coming from uh, TPA, and they're going to be able to control the map just as they did last time. So that play from Stanley is just huge this game. And, and you think Lil Ball's finally now picking up his... Uh his own oracles and Dr. Mundo finished the Heart of Gold, allowed him, said, okay, you know, I've got the gold income now from the Heart of Gold. I can start moving around and doing more things on the map. But you're seeing differing builds come through here, right? You're seeing you're seeing a Riggles Lantern be the focus here for Diamond. He's going to move in and, and try to, you know, put a lot of pressure on the map. And here comes a gank at the bottom lane. Diamond getting hit off of Freak. We said it before. The jungler is always there the perfect time. Stopping these ganks from happening or going in anybody's favor. They finally do drop the second turret of the match here. No, they're Almost. forced off. Almost getting it. Great job by Gendry to just focus down on those minions, but they do have that turret prep for a kill. Alex Each looks like he's grabbing Wraiths and may head down for an assistance here, but they have to know that a lot of time has been taken, so what do they consider to be something that's worth their time right now? Gendry's baiting out because he's got a bunch of teammates coming in. Darian flanking around the back. This is going to be bad. This is going to be big, and there is Darian. They did spend enough time down bottom taking out BB.
Nice move overall. You're going to see now. Uh, they, get, they, get, they get map control for it too, of course. They've got that Oracles. They've got the, all that pressure. Stanley will trade for a turret. And actually, this is a really good turret to trade for. It is very hard to kill secondary turrets here. So this is actually, I think, an advantageous trade overall for TPA. Freak just looks like one of those games that bottom lane will soon be forgot about with all the focus top. That Baron's going to oh! be next. They get a kill, or they get Dragon, rather. A beautiful steal there, looking for the kill. Maybe is still down. Goes to Pepper with a sliver of health. Looking top as Alex is tries to uh, hold off Stanley. Toys here on the chase, throws down the wall, just missing out. Diamond, the ultimate passing in front of him as well. Moscow 5 walks away from this one, but Toys on Anivia grabbing Dragon. This is actually really good. Stanley chasing this one down. Must force that flash. Alex just dodging those attacks. If any basic attack had landed, that Lucifer buff would have been enough to chase that one down. Alex was out of mana. And that's really the good, really the great thing about Needly is she can fight tooth and nail for a while. Everyone can get low on health and low on mana. And then she's like, well, great. Cougar form costs no mana. I'm going to assassinate you. Thank you very much. Really good situation there. And with that, that Dragon Steel in there as well, they've actually pushed themselves very, very far ahead. That's normally really the skill there uh, for Diamond. And I, and I think there was some coordination there. TPA saying, you know what? Yeah, our smite, you know, we're not going to kill it, but Anivia can last hit it. We'll smite early and make that happen. And that is who has the most gold. Anivia, 5,600 for toys. And right behind him is actually going to be BB. These guys are carrying the game. 49,000 for Alex East, or 40, 4,900, I should say. He hasn't even hit 5,000 yet, so you can see that money domination for Taipei Assassins is really what keeps them winning these fights. Now, we do have that first blood coming in for Darian, but it's going to be that money that really helps TPA in these fights. As they get together as a team, we've seen Moscow 5 has very strong mechanics, but Taipei Assassins is finding a way through that. And they're really taking these fights in their favor. The Dragon Steel helped them a lot with the control of gold. They have three turrets down on the map creep. Freak, the entry of the jungle becomes so much more heavy for them now. They're able to just initiate so much more. Stanley getting himself in a pretty sticky situation here as he makes his way into the bush, dodges the Flash Frost, or Ice Blast, I should say. And they make it out for the teleport. So really, TPA just continually continuously pressuring the aggression until they find a fight they want. This is really exactly what is happening here, because M5, you know, they know M5 does not want to fight, yet they know that they've, just like Reginald said, picked that, that early game dominant team, even though they didn't start out 3-1 and one like last time, but they're actually starting to win their lanes. You're seeing 156 to 120 at the top lane. 180 to 170, actually pretty much a wash in the middle, but the big difference is 150 to 110 at that bottom lane. You're seeing wow. a Bloodthirster Phage versus just a Zeal among the AD carries, so you're absolutely seeing TPA with a big, big advantage early on they know that the fight is not there for m5 that they are just happy to uh, m5 actually must really sit in the back and defend and so they're turning that advantage into turret 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 a very fortunate dragon steel to be fair that was very close that was neck and neck but they're going to keep that pressure on they're going to let stanley overextend just a little bit because he knows there's not a lot of damage yet here on the on the other team and they're going to let him kind of move in and really go for pressure here trying to turn these around get more turret advantages because then uh, you know, it, as Hotshot, I think, said, where, you know, you've got to accrue enough of a gold lead early on right. that, that when it comes to late game, you're still on equal footing because, hey, if you're richer, you've got items. Who cares what your champion is? Oh, Forrest out of the fight there. Taipei Assassins continuing to keep the aggression on as they are now in the jungle trying to get the smite out, and they do grab it. You see that going to BB, so that's going to be very effective for him in these upcoming fights. Taipei Assassins, they've... Up until this point, it went a lot faster than last game. Oh, Genja getting a crest on here down in the bottom. It does not look like he's in a happy place. And it looks like the ultimate will be able to wipe him out. He will not be in position for Kathy and Surprise. A little bit on mistake. More than happy to take it as they wipe out that wave as well, trying to stop the damage on the turret. You can see Toys clearing the experience as they just continue to deny. And this is really what we saw at Taipei Assassins. I was just about to say they're not doing this as fast as they did last game. We got to this point where they took down the turrets, and then we've extremely slowed down. This is when we saw Vayne running around, taking down turrets one after the other. Taipei Assassins rolling back at the flow of things here. They're going to micro the damage from the turret in and out, and they're going to be able to take this one down as the minions finally come in. They have such control over the map, and even for this to happen, a great job mentally knowing that the, the rest of M5 was really hurt or backing. There's not even a chance for Baron. They have all the time to walk around. And this is really, uh, you know, TPA playing this, at, uh, and I'm surprised actually. They played it as a split push, but it's actually working out because they accrued that early game lead. You know, I, I said, you know, my first guess was that uh, I'm, I'm worried about playing split push because they're going to be able to, you know, scale on you late game. But with all the lanes winning, um, that split push is allowing them to actually put a lot of pressure on different 
on different lanes, because the difficulty for them is that they're facing against Kog'Maw, who's got area of effect, and against Gragas, who's got amazing area of effect damage. M5 is really good at sweeping out minion waves. And so what Taipei Assassin's is doing is putting pressure on so many places on the map that M5 can't stop them all. In fact, they're not stopping them anywhere. The bottom lane second turret went down. The top lane second turret went down. There's now a 5,000 gold lead. Despite splitting, you know, champion kills equally one to one, they're up five turrets to one. They stole the dragon. They're winning in minions because they're lane mismatches, and they're continuing to keep the pressure on. They're still at 50 gold, uh, 40 minions top lane, 50 minions bottom lane, a negligible amount in that in that mid lane, which is fine. That's not, you know, really the emphasis there. And Nivea is there to to put a lot of pressure and stop pushes. If you, if you look at M5 trying to engage on, Crystallized Wall will stop them in their tracks and prevent the rest of the team from following in. If Diamond does dive into Shivana, Crystallized will stop anyone else from following up. So Moscow 5 stopping the amount of deaths this time by last game. It was about 6-1 to one in favor of Taipei Assassins coming from the blue side. And right now with the Dragons and everything in their favor, they actually have 5,000 gold lead because of the turrets. They went a lot more for objectives this game instead of those early kills, and they're really controlling this matchup. Trying to throw out some damage there. They're just trying to push Gosu out of lane. They cannot, Moscow 5 cannot allow TPA to continue winning those small damage streaks. And this is a TPA, actually. Now that I think about it, I didn't think about this in Champion Select, but everyone on that team has poke. Uh, Sona, not not the longest range overall, but you've got Needly, you've got Dr. Mooney, you've got Anivia, you've got Ezreal. All that can deal damage a thousand range away on the opposition. And as soon as M5 picked up that new, new first pick, they knew there is no dealer on this roster. Not a single person, except for, except for Yorick. Uh, and, and a little bit of Gragas as well can really replenish their health bars easily. And oh, look at that! We're Crystallized blocking out Darian, forcing him to flash away. And that is a loss right there. See, he's still trying to focus. He is not happy about what happened in that situation. They've stopped as well. So he's going to stay bottom. Was forced to walk back. But if his team can keep them up top, no, they can't. They've allowed him towards the bottom. Stanley now forced to fend for himself. Flashing over the wall. If he can hit that bush, he's pretty much out of here and gone. His team will be able to help him. And we can see the pressure he's able to push. Just Stanley is dictating where Moscow 5 needs to be. And look at Poison's build. It's really interesting. He rushed the Fiends on Holy Grail, but then uh, immediately jumped onto Banshee's Veil, knowing that that TPA strength, again, is a is a long-range poke team. Now that they've sieged a lot of turrets, now that they've built themselves a 5,000 gold lead, this actually looks a lot like a Zubu Frost versus TSM Game 1, where their team is so long-range and M5 has to have a really kind of unfortunate engagement, a very difficult engagement to push themselves in. And the best way to do that is explosive task, pushing toys out of position and just making an omelet out of Anivia. By getting that, that Banshee's Veil, there, there's no easy way, as long as he, he's able to dodge abilities, there's no easy way for them to actually, uh, you know, get her out of position. The explosive cast will get blocked by Banshees. If he's uh, if he's watchful, he can dodge the artillery shots from Kogma and never get that Banshee's pop. There's no really other way for them to easily break that Banshee's. And so if Toys is on his A game, he's watchful and, and making sure he, he's paying attention, he should never get chunked out and never get out of position. And he will continue to be that crazy long-range threat that doesn't allow anything to happen to his teammates. So both teams have considerably slowed down now. It's still one to one. There's a lot of caution being played here throughout this semifinal matchup as it is do or die for League of Legends Season 2. These teams trying to get themselves a ticket here to the World Finals to buy for that million, $2 million prize pool. At 24 minutes into the game, TPA has a slight gold lead, but at the one to one on kills, these team fights really have not had true definition in them. Both teams have kind of been spread out during the fights. We've had somebody pushing bottom. Genji wasn't the last one with Stanley, and then they were forced to go bottom. We see how tanky Stanley is, though. Darian played a huge role in the first game where we saw him get Triforce Guardian Angels. They're not up to that point yet, so they can't be that tanky front line that they are required. The crowd control will not lock people in there for them. And Freak, like you said, the poke strap from Taipei Assassins has obviously just crushed down the turrets of Moscow 5. They're yep. now forced to defend this, really putting Vision in their own jungle, trying to defend and catch somebody off guard on a team that is very, very mobile. And what TP is going for now is they realize that these turrets are much harder to kill. It's it's very difficult to go for an inhibitor turret. Their split push got the pressure and, and killed the, the top and, and bottom uh, you know middle turrets there. Let's go down to the inhibitors there. This mid lane is the only easily accessed turret left, but like we just talked about, M5's lineup, with, with uh, specifically with Kogma and Gragas, are very good at stopping pushes. So M5 are looking to sweep wards, or not, not M5 rather, but TPA are looking to sweep wards and bait M5 into an unfavorable battle. 
the entire area um, from blue team into Baron is just filled with with amazing places for Anivia walls. If you go from the Golem uh, area, there's just like a really tiny choke point that even level one crystallize would block out. If you go from the other entrance near the brush, again, crystallize will block that out as well without much effort. If you ever see TPA go for a Baron attempt, expect to see toys in one of these brushes. Um, once he gets Golem buff, expect to see him in one of those brushes near near that that Baron pit, but not actually fighting Baron too much himself. Ready to crystallize and block off M5 when they go in. Now he might block off all five if they, if they think they can kill Baron in time and just simply pick up the kill, or they'll wait for someone to cross, wall off the rest of the team, and then jump in onto that teammate. Uh, now the problem is, if they wall off one person like Diamond or Darian, you know, Darian's five is about to come up. Diamond, of course, is Shivana, can ult back over or flash back over. Alex can body slam or flash. And again, you know, everyone on M5 has flash. So I would not expect TVA to try to wall off one member, go for a kill, because it means, you know, they'll have to turn around, Baron will get some health back, they'll just flash back over, Chris Lies will be on cooldown, and then M5 will go back into the fight. So what they want to do is, is finally clear out enough wards that M5 has to guess when they go for Baron. And when they guess, they, they you know, they need to get to the point where, where they see someone in the bottom lane, like Genja's trying to farm at the bottom, you know, or Stanley split pushes, forces Genja to defend, and then teleports right. to his team. Once they've, once they've blinded all the ward vision, and once they've done that with their Oracle sweeps and started out Baron, they can deal a whole bunch of damage, they can pick that out, and just like crush it down really fast, and, and Mundo, Needley, and Ezreal are really good at that. Um, and then they can kind of go together, wall off the engagement, pick up Baron, and then siege again from there. With Baron buff, it's very easy to siege. As they are going for it, I feel that some of Moscow 5's victory, points of victory are now being nullified as everybody on TPA is acting as the carry. A very nice barrel coming in from Alex. A lot of damage being taken off there, and that is something that is considerable in a fight, especially on BB. If you can separate him from Mistake, there is not much peel that will stop the fight from happening. Stanley off on the side, but he gets to the fight very quickly. Drew Shot Barrage going out. Looks like the blue buff actually goes to Toys on that one. Again, stealing a buff for himself. Actually stole Dragon last time. The initiation goes down. This is the damage that they needed. They are able to get a good amount down. They do drop one for one right now. Baby finds himself on the ground. The focus on Stanley. But it is the escape artist, Nidalee, to flash out alive. And they're only able to grab two for Gosu. A huge fight for Moscow 5. And that was an unfortunate initiation. TPA burned all of their cooldowns on Nagosu Pepper, but they were all grouped together. They were just touching each other, holding hands, and, and getting just crushed down by Absolute Zero, getting crushed down by Shivana's initiation, and the barrels coming out from Alex Ish. That was the exact fight they needed, killing out the AD carry. M5 now has map control, and they're going to immediately jump for the biggest thing they can. They've got to risk it here. They're going for Baron. They put Genja in the right spot. If they did not have him for this, they would not be attempting Baron. But good pressure now coming in from Stanley. They have a Nivi on the right side, and that just spells too much burst damage for them. They back off. And that's just so unfortunate. And that, is, and part of that is is TPA putting so much much pressure on the map that look at the top wave. The, the top wave is so shoved down. M5 could not counterattack and go for like a top lane uh, a top lane turret. Dragon was dead. That bottom lane. Maybe had enough pressure to, to, to push for that, but the problem is they can't go bottom lane because it enables Baron to TPA. So TPA, you know, because of how much pressure they put throughout this map, they've only allowed Baron as like the only counterattack option for M5. As long as that top lane is pushed down, M5 can win fights for days and never capitalize with any kind of major objective. And that means that that a team fight is only worth 450 gold per champion. It's not worth more than that, and, and that actually allows TPA to kind of hold onto this gold lead longer, even if they miss them. Really just super safe play around Baron. You see Stanley putting down the bushwhacks, acting as semi-wards. Obviously the team has to walk through them. They start to clear out the Baron pit and they go to force the fight again. They may have waited a little too long as they were pushing away Moscow 5 there during that portion of time when they were back to base. There it is, the crescendo going off, missing the entire team. Stanley all by himself forcing Gosu out of the fight. He won't even be assisted. And it is going to be huge damage on the toys. Diamond now forced out. You can see the area of effect coming from that Anivia ultimate has completely spread out Moscow 5's team. They're all forced to get kills now. The mobility of this team, how I have ever, allows them to catch up in these ganks. You can see just how spread out. Genja had to go to the left. We saw them going to the right. Gosu Pepper did go down in that fight as Stanley just had his way with them. Three. TPA dictated that fight from the second one. And, and, and a lot of that was really the, the Harrier Stanley on Needley 
completely splitting up that roster. And it looks it looks so much like that prior fight where TPA got jumped on and, and it was just like, oh, this is scary. Toys got jumped. Oh, my gosh, everyone's just like going to lose their cooldowns and get dropped out. Mistaken fully whipped Crescendo. But the thing is, Genja was never there to follow up for that, that fight. The last one where, where, where M5 went up 2-1 to one in the battle, that's because Genja got to keep putting on damage you know, on top of the ultimate going off, on top of everyone else dealing a whole bunch of damage. That was not the case this time around. That was Needly pulling so much aggression. And by going Trinity Force here, you know, playing a, a, a bit of a different role here, actually being offensive based, he is able to jump on the Genja and really, really ruin his day. Genja must respond to Stanley's moves. And with Stanley being level 18, with Stanley, you know, three level advantage there, that really allows him to, to jump on the Genja and force a response. And so, so Genja cannot hit targets he wants. He cannot push down on the rest of TPA. And, and Stanley being so amazingly strong, a lot of magic resist, now going for a Guardian Angel on top of that. There's no easy reaction to Neely here. They are really shutting down Genja this matchup. He is already out of the base. I don't think he has too much money under his belt, and he's actually going against Triforce, Bloodthirster, as well as a little bit of damage mitigation. I think we're going to see maybe a Quicksilver Sash. I'm not sure that Negatron Cloak is out on Ezreal, but you can just see 10,000 gold to 7,600 gold. He hasn't even finished the Infinity Edge yet. He does have a Phantom Dancer, but with 31 minutes into the game, you really need to see a lot more pressure coming from your AD carries. Huge props to Taipei Assassins for shutting down that champion. And once again, they're just going to put the pressure on the Baron. They're going to be ready to toss those crystallizes out. There's Toys waiting in that brush. Gets the wall off the Nadarian, and his flash is up, though. He should be safe. He's just tanking and baiting time. This is the damage he needs. He does throw his out that Crescendo goes to. They put a ward over the wall so they can see better in this fight. The entire team is making it there. Darian gets himself out of life. Two shot barrage going through them. Not enough damage to take him down. A beautiful void use from Genja. But the flash wall from Toys. The initiation is still on. And they're forced to back out of this one as they just did not want to walk through the choke of that wolf. Now, once again, that is, that is Darian playing his role so effectively saying, yes, Focus me. Stop hitting Baron. Just, you know, just, just fight me. I dare you. You know, pop his guard and angel, but that's fine. He gets to go back to base, buy items, and once again, TPA's uh, attempt at killing Baron is stopped again. Now, they've lost a guard and angel for it. That is relevant, but the longer that, that M5 can buy time, at once Genja gets that infinity edge, you've seen their team fights be so good that it's, it's just, can Genja actually deal damage? If he can, you'll see these team fights go M5's way. Really needs that item. Once he hits it, probably about 35 minutes. Genja will become a time bomb for his team, and it needs to be protected. They are going back towards that barren area. They could have the upper hand here. It's quite low mana for TPA. I'd be very surprised if they try to start this fight. Three to four is the kill score as it just continues to creep up. TPA with a bit of a lead there, and they are looking at an 8,000 gold lead overall with four turrets in their favor. This giving, giving them the map control. You can see Nidalee going down bottom. That teleport is up, however, Freak. They're going to be able to play this one very cautiously. They're going to go back, make sure they leave a few that can still poke at Baron. We're going to have BB there. They obviously don't want to leave this one up, but they have to realize they have the oracles. They're like, they can't even see us backing. We're perfectly fine to do this. TPA is just really playing the clock in their favor right now. Yeah, but again, that clock is still risky because Genja will continue to scale. Now, right. finally, you're going to see a death cap come in soon from Toys. That'll be a big damage shift. There it is, picked up there. That's a very, 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 very important buy, but there we go. Stanley getting his Guardian Angel on top of that. Now it's going to be even harder for Genji to survive this. He's got enough armor, honestly, that even Infinity Edge, last, uh, Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer, not all that difficult to deal with. Little Balls, again, preparing for the Baron attempt, running through, sweeping wards, putting another one down, and once more starting out this attempt. Eevee, though, burning his Arcane Ship for this, a little bit of a risky proposition. Let's see what they do have. That True Shot Barrage is down. We have a few flashes down for TPA, but most of their summoner spells are up. I'd say 90%. All of them except for Ignite Flash for Darien. These teams are definitely ready to dance out this Baron right now. They are in the best possible sorts of their summoner spells and abilities. However, the item's in oh, favor of TPA. So it's really going to have to focus this fight perfectly. Darien getting locked up, or locked up rather. He took a little bit of damage. That's going to be a tower for TPA as they solidify their advantage a little bit more. Going to start pushing all of these ways down. You can see the pings going back. They're saying, let's make sure none of the buffs are there. Let's deny everything we can in their camps and only give them the small waves that are coming in. And that's the thing that's going to hurt Genja as well. He doesn't have a lane to farm. He's only picking up minions every so often with his team clearing these waves. So he's not going to get that Infinity Edge super soon. Well, an aggressive move in, and there's the crescendo. That's going to be big damage. Darian will go down. The ultimate was used previously. No, actually, he has it back up in time. So they will have some time to create some disruption here. Alex is does not like it, though. 
flat or exhausted out quite quickly. His damage does nothing as he waits for cooldowns. He does not want his Guardian Angel to go down in vain. You're going to see that fight forced out. He does have the red and the fate proc going on him. Alex Hitch will go down. They're going to focus that Guardian Angel. We see very low health on Toys as well. He's forced to go back into the fight. The portion of it, they know they're going to win. Stanley still giving zero Fs as he just fights in a 2v1 situation. 35 minutes into the game. TPA completely dictating this entire fight. We have two down for Moscow. Five NQ. Stanley just jumping right out of Absolute Zero's two shot barrage hits. And you can keep, see they're keeping them from backing. Stanley is allowing this Baron to go completely uncontested. And that's going to be the exact right answer here. They had the Baron dance earlier, getting that turret kill, and then finally got themselves into the battle they wanted. They just split up M5 completely. Baron is theirs, 53 to 41,000 gold. This is looking so good for the Taipei Assassins. They've just been strangled, just strangle holding the map the entire time. Not a single major mistake. The one bad team fight, but M5 couldn't capitalize. That that team fight just didn't go anywhere. Even when M5 got controlled, because they 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 had minions where they wanted them. There was no counterattack available. It was only a 300 gold swing, and they were back on it. And and you saw just all the moves that were being made. Stanley putting the pressure on the bottom lane, teleporting in when the team fight mattered. TPA constantly forcing M5 off their turret, make them lose minion waves on their own turrets, and, and making them run in to stop Baron, walling and burning flashes, walling and making Darien lose a Guardian Angel, just accruing small advantages after small advantages. And as long as they keep doing them with enough frequency, they come back in before the Guardian Angels back up. They come back in before Flash is back up. They do that enough, and they pick up some kills. Forcing a Flash out of Stanley. He does have Flash and Teleport down now. Not exactly the window we've been speaking of for teams really to fight in. They do have to get that Infinity Edge. Finally now onto Genja. 36 minutes in. Genja, very pushed back throughout this entire game, has done well for himself. However, he's only going to be about, only going to be about, he's just, uh, 60 minions down on BB. BB's had three rain over the map, and like I said, with the lanes being pushed, they don't have much to farm singly, so Genja's been forced to find what he can in and out of Gragas barrels from Alex Hitch. And that's really not trying to hurt each other, really doing that on purpose, but it is going to hurt in general as they come into these fights. BB so far ahead right now, Freak, this Baron buff could cause that tower to go down. This is do or die right now for M5. There's no teleport on Stanley. He's he's only a half lane away, but they did poke off the Banshee's Veil uh, from Anim. You can see that ticking down on the bottom right of your screen. It's about halfway down. That's really their time to go in. They need to get toys out in the fight. Oh, very nice stop there. Kenja on the right side. They get that. Oh, Little Ball's going down instantly as he gets caught out. They take down Mystique. They have the initiation on this fight, but they choose to halt on it, push out their lanes, and figure out where they can go from here. So much damage being dealt, and you just saw the explosive cast forcing that fight to go the way they wanted. Lil Ball's just not tanky enough to withstand all of that pressure. But again, there was no counterattack available for M5 BenQ. In fact, TPA will even get the dragon for themselves despite losing two for nothing. They're even gonna try for this for this uh, golem right here that, you know, again, yes, losing two kills is a gold swing. It's about 750 gold, uh, actually more like 800 gold for getting that kill taken away, but it's still not that big of a deal. They've still got map control and they're still ready to put the advantage on. But now we're getting to that point where gold matters less and less. That late game finally starting to happen. M5 channeling their, their, their fellow continent, CLG EU, into their gameplay and force themselves in that late game. New New Kogma will be incredibly difficult to deal with at the end of this game. So right now, what I think is that a Frozen Heart needs to come out, I think, from Needly here. She needs to put that on and, and slow down the attacks into that opposition because Kogma's not really scary, Shivana's not really scary, and even York's gonna be a bit difficult. He's got that Trinity Force, he's got some decent damage output, but it's mostly to survive Kogma. Again, these team comps are about bashing their skulls into each other in the yeah. front line. They've gotta withstand the damage against uh, Kogma here. And we saw how much pressure Gozu was getting in the early part of the game. He really just went for an item that's going to facilitate Kogma 100%, as well as Diamond Prox, but really Starks, or that Zeke's Herald rather, the lifesteal as well as attack speed, just buffing up, and it's really going to be going to Kogma. You'll see them really sticking together. Gosu has been forced out of the fight, and Stanley's been doing a great job at that. He can only blood boil once. It lasts quite a long time, but that aura from Zeke's is not going to be assisting the team. So we'll see if Stanley goes ahead, focuses Gosu one more time in the fight. They're also missing out a few times now. I think the last time we saw Gosu use Absolute Zero in the fight was in bottom lane.
it's been uh, you know quite a while overall and, and that's you know really really significant that uh you know that that absolute zero uh, is going to be a huge deal because there's actually very few interrupts for it now it won't hit all that hard he's only level 12 and there is a front line to deal with and, and, right. and bb and toys they play it right shouldn't be hit by that damage whatsoever but the thing is it's still a, a, a significant amount of crowd control and it really will mess with the front line not allowing him to kite and it really just lets genja melt that front line more that's what this is all about it's just again bashing your skulls into the skulls of your opponents and, and just saying who's got more gold who does more damage and so the m5 front line is there to just lock up the tpa front line and say genja look you've been cloned you've got blood boil hope you got some items man i add last whisper and phantom dancer yeah. All in here now, he's hit that late game point. It's now the Cogma show. TPA needs an answer. It is kind of crazy how that takes such an effective turn here. He is going to be outputting probably more damage than Ezreal. The four or five shot Cogma kills could be coming out now, especially with that blood boil on. He's going to be able to drop somebody and be out of the fight and play even safer Cogma than usual. Alex is trying to push this lane out. Stanley continuously staying top lane. You can see him communicating with his team on the screen at the bottom as they just kind of chat this one out and figure out how they're going to continuously push this lane. With that Baron down, you can see Little Balls can focus down bottom. They don't really have to worry about too many objectives. And you see a good aggress onto Stanley. He's pushed out of the fight, though. That blue buff helping Alex to get that ultimate back in just under 60 seconds. It's actually on a 40-second cooldown just about now. And we'll see. It is rank 3. Everybody's just about level 18 except for the junglers and supports. Diamond knows they are going through his jungle. This would not be the engage that Moscow 5 is looking for. No, they're just going to keep stealing these buffs. And again, this is TPA knowing that they have map control. And in a general fight, especially in the jungle, TPA is happy to just fight like, oh my gosh, Genja, there's a crescendo. He's going to get almost taken down. Oh, he does live, though. However, Yorick Alti coming in. It looks like he wants to get back into this fight. But the Bio Arcane Barrage not even hitting anybody. He throws out one auto attack that entire fight. Very unfortunate. He did take a lot of damage, Freak. Two blinking, or two blinking emblems right now for Moscow 5 as his tower is being pushed. We do see Alex coming down to help his team, but Stanley is by himself up top, pushing that turret. This is not looking good for Moscow 5. The ultimate onto Little Balls. They are going to drop Alex. The Guardian Angel triggering his diamond. Dragon's descent to the middle of the fight to blow cooldowns for his team. Toys, so much damage going down to him. And they are able to back this one out as he comes up from Rebirth. BB focusing onto the inhibitor. It looks like they drop it. Stanley doing so much work up top, going to drop his own inhibitor as well. Two go down at the 42 minute mark, and TPA looks to just hang out in Moscow 5's base. Right now, a three on four, but they're getting pushed out. Oh my gosh, the counterattack goes to Pepper and goes down. They've now got a four on two on the map, and Baron's gotta be soon. It's in 10 seconds. That is the most fortunately timed fight ever for TPA because they're gonna have complete Baron control. Uh, there's no way this gets stolen away. And, and, and that was just a perfect setup. They dealt so much damage at the start that they forced Genja out, and as soon as Genja had to go heal, you knew TPA had map control. They could simply just push their faces onto that bottom turret, and they would have the damage to kill it out. And you saw them be a little bit pensive, and finally said, no, 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 Genja's out of the fight. It's okay, guys, he's out. Let's go. Let's pick this one up. Even Mundo will respawn in time to allow Baron Buffs to go to everybody. Little Balls, so tanky now. And you look at his build. I like this build. He's got double uh, Negatron Cloak on top of that Warmogs because he knows that with, with, with a Randuins and a Warmogs, the highest source of damage is actually Genja's uh, W right. Pass. It's actually the bio Arcane Barrage. So he's adding magic resist to mitigate that. There is going to be so hard for Mundo to drop down here. He's going to be incredibly tanky. You won't see Mundo die again, most likely, unless he gets way too aggressive. A lot of the team as well went for those uh, Ninja Tabi boots. They're looking for the damage from Ezreal, but that's not going to be helping anymore. There's crowd control that they're getting locked up with that is allowing these fights to continuously happen. Stanley teleporting in, so we're not going to see some kind of cheeky backdoor strat. They're all going for the same lane. They're all going to be, not same lane rather, but they're not going to be jumping lanes. They're going to pick that lane and pressure it down. Looks like mid is going to be the first choice with Little Balls in the option to run towards top with his teammate BB. They're gathering together now in front of this turret. The attack speed from Essence Flux is out for both Little Balls. There goes the exploding cast. It looks like they will initiate this fight on. The turret goes down. Darian gets caught out. He can't even ultimate the crescendo. Stopping them from using the abilities. Diamond Prox goes down. The inhibitor is open. The double kill comes out. Moscow 5 looking very grim right now. Taipei Assassins look to take down the last Nexus turret. And they will drop Moscow 5 for the League of Legends Championship playoffs. And would you look at that? The, the, the cheers, the yells, and the look of relief all mixed at the same time on their faces 
Taipei Assassins are the first team to make it to the World Finals. And online in a major tournament, the first to take out Moscow Five. They're, well, yeah, as far as, as far as internationally goes, they yeah. are the first international team to ever beat M5, joining CLG EU in the annals of history. So guys, we made it this far. Would you look at that play? And, and that was exactly what they said it took. It was early openings, early openings. Stanley crushing faces top yep. lane, absolutely took out Darian. I mean, Darian is scary. He didn't feed, he didn't make any bad mistakes, but that lane matchup was brutal. You saw him take the turret down about 12 uh, minutes in, a lot of pressure there. You saw the bottom lane come out ahead, that Sona Ezreal, that counter lane, that was exactly what it took. They knew they were fighting Nunu Cog. They knew it was late game, and they said, yes, M5 Ben Q. We know your late game. We know you will scale like crazy at this game. But we know we can play this game perfectly. We know yeah. we can put the pressure on from minute one. Win mid, win top, win bottom. A little rocky in the jungle, but that was okay. They won all their carry lanes. Every single one of them winning in minions for the first 20 minutes. You know, taking turrets out early on as well. Getting control over everything. The dragon steal was great. And then once 25 minutes hit, it was okay. We can bait you at Baron. We've built a, a 6, 8, 10,000 gold lead. Come at us at Baron. Sweep boards, come at us at Baron. Sweep boards, come at us. What a beautiful play from TPA. Let's get a replay of that last fight with audio from the team.